So this video is part of a series on DDD, my DIY dev droid. It's the final part of three videos on motor control. In this video, we get to automate the ability to set the motor speed, letting an algorithm control the amount of throttle necessary to accelerate to that speed and then maintain that speed, all on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. So just a quick recap on DDD. DDD is a three-wheeled robot for the purposes of experimentation with robotics and ROS2 using the Raspberry Pi Pico and Raspberry Pi 4. DDD is driven by two 12 volt motors on the front two wheels. A dual H bridge drives the motors and rotary encoders measure the speed. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay are a great partner for any maker able to manufacture PCB boards, undertake 3D printing or CNC builds, as well as sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. The service is required for any droid builder. Once I've worked out all of the control circuits for DDD, I plan on having the PCBs produced by PCBWay. In previous videos, we've seen how to set the throttle and to measure the speed produced. There's a relationship between these two, but it is affected by the environment. When we go uphill, we need more throttle than when we go downhill. So we need an algorithm to control speed, an algorithm that's running independently on each wheel. Motors may respond differently to the environment. The algorithm for controlling speed from the throttle that I'm going to use is called PID, P-I-D, Proportional Integral Derivative. Let me explain this algorithm. To start with, we have a set point, the target we're trying to get to. In this case, the speed we want DDD to travel at. And then we have a processing value, which is the current speed we're actually reading from the robot itself. And then we want an output of our algorithm, which is going to actually be this throttle. And that's going to be the resulting value of the PID algorithm. PID is used in many situations for speed control, for temperature control, and for brightness. Anywhere where um, the value going into the control system is very different from the value that you're reading back, and you want to actually have uh, maintain an algorithm relationship between the two. So PID is really three algorithms and three components, the proportional, integral, and derivative parts. The proportional part really is the big gain value in the algorithm. It tends to cause overrunning and get into a sine wave around the target. So, you know, if you accelerate rapidly towards your goal, overshoot, then correct over and overcorrect, so you move under the speed, overcorrect, etc., and that continues. The integral part is the longer term impact, moving more slowly towards the target. So it acts as a calming influence on the algorithm. And finally, the derivative. Well, this is a prediction. So you're trying to predict the overrun and correct any of the overacceleration that we're putting into the system. The sum of these three parts gives us the value for PID. Good news is that the PID algorithm, along with a lot of other control algorithms, are included in ROS2, in the ROS2 control package. The bad news is that these are not ported as part of MicroRos, so it's not necessarily straightforward to run them on the Pico. For my experiments right now, I've chosen to implement PID myself, though a better later option would be to port ROS2 control. All the code for today's example is included on GitHub in my DDD experiments repository, and this one is the Project 3 PID. From a software point of view, because I'm implementing PID myself, I actually only need the Pico SDK for this algorithm. Of course, we're using PWM library within the SDK for doing the throttle, and then we're reading a rotary encoder to measure the speed. The PID algorithm itself can just sit there running itself at a 200 millisecond uh, frequency. So over in VS Code, I've got my DDD repo, and we've got in here the PID example project. So let's have a look in here, in the source, really I want to talk about um, our new PID motor. So this is um, 
our PID class and that is a extension of our motor manager. It's got the same constructor as before so we can uh, give it the two channels that we are using or two GPIO pads we're using for PWN control for clockwise and counterclockwise and the two um, pa pads we're using then to read back from the rotary encoders. Now this time I'm adding in here the ability to set the speed. Um, now once again I sort of haven't done this quite the right way. I should have been uh, working on radians per second. Uh, that would be what I need to really fit into the ROS2 ecosystem as I understand it. But actually when I was writing this code I ended up doing revolutions per minute because it was nice and easy to focus on that and to count them myself. Um, so then I've basically ended up writing a um, conversion on top to give me the uh, radians per second version of setting speed. Both of which take bools which give you the direction. So uh, true for, um, for that clockwise bool will turn clockwise, false will turn counterclockwise. The PID algorithm needs some constants. Uh, which are the gains values for the P, I and D parts of the um, algorithm. And I can actually set these from, um, from the client here using the config PID method. Then really the main work uh, and controlling the throttle is uh, do PID. And this needs to be repeatedly called uh, to constantly update what the PID current value is, what the error is, and actually reset the throt throttle. Then in addition to that, I've also exposed the PID algorithm so that I can actually call PID and get these data items back from the calculation. The reason I'm doing that is um, so that I can actually debug and work out, well, how is my motor performing? And so I can show you a nice graph in the demo in a minute. So let's have a look at the CPP file. So over in the CPP file, um, the uh, set speed is basically just really storing the speed that we are trying to get hold of and what that target speed is. Um, so there it is, set speed, sorry. It's setting X target revolutions per minute to be the target speed. Um, the set speed in radians uh, is doing calculations to convert that to revolutions per minute and then setting the speed. The configuring PID, well that's just storing those three constants which we're gonna use later. Then the PID algorithm itself is within that um, PID method. And that is doing all of the calculations I showed you on those slides, drawing those little graphs. Pretty simple. Only thing I'd say about this is I am using an average value for the actual um, process value that I'm getting back, or the speed that I'm getting back for the robot. I had some problems when I was originally playing around with this that um, it really wasn't very stable at all and it was constantly overreacting. And the easiest way I found to handle that was to make sure that the speed I was getting off the, the wheels was actually slightly averaged and not the, um, the very precise, very quick calculations of speed that I was previously getting. Um, if you remember from last time, I was actually updating speed based on interrupts, which is really quite quick. Um, and perhaps not enough to give a consistent speed for the motor. And therefore, if you're not careful, what you end up with is uh, the algorithm reacting to minor little interrupts on the as the speed goes around. So using the average helped. The do PID method is what is actually then calling that PID and getting that PID calculation done. And it's then taking a delta of that and applying that onto the current throttle. Um, I the value that I'm deltering that by and, and actually dividing that by 320, um, that's based on the fact that I know that uh, roughly 320 revolutions per minute will give me a um, a throttle that needs to be around 1.0. So that's what what I saw. Sort of, and I did a whole load of uh, tests to just try and work out and balance the algorithms and the constants against. The percentage or the portion of this that I was going to, to end up using and that's where I ended up being um, 
is that the best way of doing this? I don't know. Things may evolve over time, but this, this sort of works and um, throttle seems to behave quite well. Let's have a look at main um, and how I'm calling this. So first of all, I guess I'm setting up two motors, left and right. They're now motor pits, but otherwise they're set up as they were last time. I'm giving them constants for my constant values for uh, K, I and D. And then I'm going to go through a set of speeds uh, from 1.5 radians per second up to 6.3 radians per second. So about up to about two uh, revolutions per second. Um, I'm going to then set the speed on both motors and then every 200 milliseconds I'm going to call the do pid on both of those motors to actually re-update the throttles. The only other thing in here is yes I am actually extracting the pid numbers for the left motor only and I'm printing them out. The reason is so I can give you a nice little graph and show you how well or nearly well my motor is actually performing. So that's it, let's have a look at the demo. So here we've got the demo. And as you can see, um, DDD's motors seem to be running quite well. You do notice, particularly on slower speed, that there is a degree of over acceleration and it really goes way beyond and then is brought back. Um, it takes quite a lot of effort to get these motors actually, or these wheels running because of the weight of them. So I, I think that's what's going on there. Um, and that, you know, it is a struggle to run at a slow speed. In hindsight, I'm not sure the motors I've got here are really the best for a slow robot to wander around the house. They're probably designed for higher speed um, racing. So um, that, that might be what we're seeing. But it, it seems to be working quite well. If we take a look at a graph on 1.5 radians per second, we can really see that over acceleration uh, that initially happens and there's brought back. And then there is, you know, some oscillation around the target speed over time. At a faster speed, 3.8 radians per second, there's less of that um, initial overrun as it's needing more force to get up to that speed anyway but you've still got a degree of isolation around that. Is that oscillation too much for a robot like this? I don't know, I think I'll find out as we experiment with DDD. So we can control the speed of the motors on DDD in terms of radians per second. With just a little mass, we can convert that to meters per second that DDD will be traveling. So we're now very close to being able to get DDD to respond to the twist messages from ROS2. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps others find it. Please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.